Thank you, gentlemen. Chair, now you recognize the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Norcross, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman, and certainly appreciate the, the ongoing insight and the most recent visit to the, uh, the region. Uh, the amazing thing that the United States does better than anybody in the world, hands down, is the logistics, the ability to move men, equipment, resources is short of remarkable. Uh, I just want to touch base, uh, Chairman of Town, Mr. Whitman. Three years ago, there were some disturbing reports on the industrial base issues uh, on our ammo plants, uh, our explosives and accelerants, and we had been very much focused on that. Had we not actually sped up the recapitalization, I think we would be even in worse place, but we still have a quite a ways to go. Uh, my question goes to Dr. Call and the general. Uh, Putin leaves no chance uh, when he speaks to the people of not only his country but the world, but to imply the nuclear option over and over again. And it finds an audience in the United States. People are worried about what might happen. Uh, we've seen time and time again, uh, there's a discussion about the red lines and what they are. And if we go back a year, what a red line was then, uh, certainly may or may not be the red line of today. And that's what I want to ask about the evolving or changing red lines. The calculations that we have made, and High Mars is one of those discussions. Early on, we didn't want to do it. What calculations are going into effect that something that we are providing is or is not going to change the red lines? How do we uh, determine what those red lines are and how have they changed since the beginning? Doctor, if you could go first. Yeah, it's something we're, we watch very closely. I think for all the reasons that you've mentioned, clearly Putin's rhetoric from the very outset of the war on nuclear matters has been irresponsible and dangerous. We've attempted not to take the bait while in private uh, making it clear to them that if they were to cross certain lines of using nuclear weapons on any scale, uh, what a world-changing event that would be. Um, as a general matter, I do not think that we are holding back uh, uh, security assistance from Ukraine at the moment, largely for escalatory reasons. I think most of the decisions we are making on security assistance are driven first and foremost by our assessment of what Ukraine needs right now, given the amount of money that uh, the American uh, uh, taxpayer has uh, given the department uh, to work with. How do we use that money uh, for what they need right now? And then the other is, uh, you know, what can we provide that doesn't have huge impacts on our own readiness and our ability to respond to our own national security crises in other parts of, of the world? So really, those are the two things that we are measuring against. I think at the moment we feel relatively comfortable on where we are on the escalatory uh, dynamic vis-a-vis -vis Russia, but it's something that we consult with our intel, intelligence community colleagues constantly to make sure we're setting the real stat, uh, you know, uh, about right without self-deterring ourselves. Thank you. So, General, when we started a year ago, there's been much discussion from the committee and those in Congress about what we're able to send to them. How much of an impact has that, quote, red line been and has it changed since a year ago? So I, I would tell you what we've sent over the last year has made a gigantic difference um, to the Ukrainians. Um, if you start where we were um, last year at the onset, um, it was about providing things at the moment that they needed. They were javelins. They were, um, they were stinger missiles. They were things that they needed to defeat the Russian army as they came across the border uh, around the country. Those things were provided in good order. Um, they were used extremely well by the Ukrainians. As the conditions changed, so too did the requests from the Ukrainians in terms of what they thought was necessary. And as we talked with our Ukrainian counterparts, what we thought would be most advantageous and, uh, and available uh, to them. All the while, as Dr. Call mentioned earlier, balancing it against our current readiness and our ability to meet any requirements around the world. Um, those have certainly morphed over time. And uh, so as you've seen, sir, now the provision of Bradley fighting vehicles, of tanks, and, and our partners make these same uh, assertions. They've all been done with these things in mind. Uh, and I feel very confident that as we go forward, we'll continue to do so and make decisions in a very thoughtful and, uh, and understanding manner. Uh, exactly my point that 
we are not holding back because of these red lines or nuclear threats. These are actual uh, determinations made by what's best for the Ukrainians and their use at any time. With that, I yield back. Thanks. Thank the gentleman. Chair, now